What you want to do with your life? Have you ever thought about broadcasting, getting a message across the world? Tonight, stuff happens, big important things, but before we get too caught up with ourselves, let's take it to Abby at the weather wall. Hey, people, there is weather coming down, it's going to be cloudy, it's going to be rainy, and then there's going to be sunshine, yeah! Back to you, Abby. Thank you, Abby. So today we're taking you to the broadcasting department to see what kind of interesting things you can learn. Uh, my name is Evgenia Solodovnikova. I am a broadcasting production instructor here at the College of Communication uh, at Washington State University. I do teach production classes, so I'm behind the camera type of person. Actually, broadcasting my, is my second uh, career or second profession. I got my bachelor's degree in applied mathematics back home in Ukraine, but when I graduated from the university I was not able to find a good job because there's no money unfortunately in sciences back home. Um, so I got interested in broadcasting. I've always liked to watch TV, but at some point I met uh, one of my friends and he invited me to get involved in a small show. Uh, so while we were working on a uh, pilot episode for that show, I learned how to edit and it kind of became my passion. Um, so I worked on that show for a while and then luckily was hired by a news company back home in Ukraine. So I was an editor there, um, a director, also did some graphics for them, some web work, and that's kind of how I transitioned into not only watching television but also making television. While working for the news company, I enjoyed a lot the fact that I was working on a new project or even more than one project every day because nobody needs yesterday's news tomorrow, right? So I had to meet deadlines and finish my projects on time for a 5 p.m. newscast, right? So I liked that fact that I was able or was given an opportunity to, to be creative and yet not being stuck with the same project for a long period of time. So these short deadlines, these um, nervousness about the deadlines and the excitement about new projects, that's what I liked a, a lot. Um, and later on when I get, got an opportunity to work on documentaries, uh, I guess that's my favorite type of videos that I can work on because documentaries really give you the opportunity to, to apply your creative work. In my uh, studio television production class students learn how to direct whether it's news or PSAs or commercials or interviews. They also learn how to operate the switcher, audio board, tape operation, graphic machines, floor directing, camera operations, so there is a lot of positions that need to be filled to work and produce uh, a show, a television show um, that is studio based. So they learn how to do all those positions as well as how to design the set and design the lighting for, for a particular show, for a particular idea that they're working on. As a great man once said, Good night and good luck. Today's study hall lesson is on Mohand Karamch 
Gandhi. You know Gandhi. Of course not. Why? Because he's never around. I haven't heard anything from him in ages. Maybe if he posted on my Facebook every once in a while, I'd know him. But no, instead I have to hear about Gandhi from outside source. That's right, we heard about him from the rumor mill, Wikipedia. And we all know that Wikipedia gets around. An information hoochie, that's what Wikipedia is. Everybody's on it all the time. But it's a quality experience hoochie. Besides, where do you think we get our fix? I mean, quality research from a bona fide source. Yeah, can you spell bona fide? Uh, where were we? That's right, Gandhi! Sounds like an action hero. Gandhi man. And to be fair, he was pretty supernatural. He beat the entire English Empire with salt. That's right, he beat them with what makes pretzels delicious. Let me put this into context. When we Americans revolutionized, yeah, that's the word, we had to fire bullets into them using guerrilla tactics. The Germans had to spend months bombing them and still didn't win. And all Gandhi had to do was take a stroll down the beach and perform a basic science experiment. Yeah, sure it was sunny out. It was friggin' India, what do you expect? And sure the beach was a few hundred miles away, but salt? Turns out the British were controlling everything in India. Well, what do you expect? These are the people who invented risk. They're so good they even took Australia. And every risk player knows that that's the stronghold. Well, Gandhi didn't have any armies to fight with because like any noob, he probably tried to take Asia. So instead, Gandhi led his people in revolt through civil disobedience, which was based around total nonviolence. Because nothing says stop hitting me with that stick than not saying stop hitting me with that stick. Basically, his people refused to partake in the British government of India. They were beaten, cursed at, and starved, but they never gave up. Well, eventually they won with salt. You might be asking yourself, but why is Gandhi so skinny? And why is he wearing a diaper all the time? Well, I don't know about that second part, but the reason he looked like a bald anorexic Jersey Shore character was because Hindus and Muslims were fighting each other instead of not fighting the British. Remember that nonviolence thing? So he fasted in protest. Say what you want, but fasting is a slow process. But unch. Eventually, Gandhi unified his people by dividing them into two separate countries, India and Pakistan. Sadly, because of this, he was assassinated by an extremist Hindu nationalist because he insisted on payment of reparations to Muslim Pakistan. So we can always remember Gandhi for initiating today's model look, actually beating the British, starting peaceful revolutions, and inventing tidy whities Well, he may not have invented them, but he sure rocked that look. Now I know what you're thinking. Why do I need to know this? Why? Because it's a prereq. I'm Conrad Robel, and I'll see you at the next study hall. <laughs>
and outdoor it's four on four, but basically you just want to get the ball into the other team's goal and score more than they do. All right, and uh, how long does a match usually last? Uh, probably about 28 minutes. We play uh, what are called chuckers, about a, it's called like a quarter in basketball. It's about seven and a half minutes long and play four of those with a 10 minute halftime. All right, cool. And um, what's your season like? Where do you guys travel to, and what kind of where do you guys go usually? Uh, we our biggest competition. We play uh, University of Idaho over in Moscow. Uh, we travel down to Corvallis for Oregon State University. Very cool. Uh, we also play against Eastern Oregon University and uh, Montana State University. And we have our regional tournament up coming up here in uh, about two weeks. And then hopefully we'll go on to nationals and play all the other schools around the nation. All right, good luck at that. And how did you get personally get started in polo? I just saw a flyer in the dorms my freshman year, and uh, I've always wanted to play it, but uh, you know, never really knew how I was going to get into it. And I saw a flyer to learn how to play, so I came out, and here I am four years later. Hi, I'm here with Kelsey, who's the president and captain of the Varsity Polo Club. And so, Kelsey, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the relationship with the horses when you're out in the arena. What, uh, what's, what's the bonding like or the experience like when you're riding and competing you know, against other people and other horses? Tell me about that. Uh, well, when we're playing on our home field, uh, we all know our horses and get attached to them. But then when you're out playing at another school, you only have as little as five minutes to get to know your horse, what it can do on the field, and really just have that bond with them to be able to get the ball and go score. So you have to build a quick relationship yeah. with them. And they really do try their best every day to help you out. Um, and did you start riding when you were young too, or is this something brand new you got to, into at WSU? No, I've actually been riding since I was in the first grade. Okay. Um, I did English riding all through high school, and then when I came to college was the first time I'd ever played polo. Awesome. And you really like it then? I yeah. love it. I hope to continue yeah. after I graduate. I'm really excited to watch you guys. Mm -hmm. it's, a really in yeah. it's a fun game to watch. It's intense. Hi, I'm Kendra Kent here with the WSU polo team. They're all really, really tired from their long game, but they wanted to say goodbye, so we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. Hey guys, I'm Spencer, and this is Detention. Today, we're going to be talking about credit. Do you have credit? Well, you better if you don't. Do you want a loan? Do you want this to affect your potential on getting an apartment? or a job? Well, today we're going to be talking about this very important commodity of life. Because you're going to need it. First, get a bank account. You want the bank to trust you? Mm-hmm. You have to trust the bank. You may just want to go to a credit union for a better rate. When you have the credit card, only buy what you can afford. Getting stuck in a hole off the bat is not a good way to build credit. Also, make sure you have a job and make sure you keep your job. You'll need some money to pay off the debt. Pay your bills on time. Nothing says don't trust this person with more credit when they can't handle the credit they already have. Make sure to use the credit card. The credit card company doesn't like people who don't actually use the plastic, along with people who don't pay the debt. Try to pay off your bill every month. If you can't afford to pay the bill, at least pay the minimum. Then. Try to pay the rest as soon as possible. Trust me, there will be plenty of time to buy beer later. Well, that's it. I mean, there's more, but do I look like a banker to you? But if you'll excuse me, I have to go see a judge about a missing fire hydrant. <laughs>